The legendary Bitcoin halving is upon us. It's rapidly approaching. But the problem is you are being lied to about the halving and what its potential impact is on the price of Bitcoin. There's a lot of theories out there all over the internet, but some of it is being spread like wildfire and it's poison to your ears because what they're saying is a complete lie. In today's video, I'm gonna present the clean, cold, hard facts in the charts. And you are going to leave this video with a sense of clarity and a sense of peace as to exactly how this has happened in Bitcoin's entire history. We're gonna look at this upcoming halving, when it's going to happen, but we're also gonna compare the 2012, 2016, and 2020 halving because they all had the exact same patterns. If we look at these patterns, we know exactly the patterns that are about to play out before they happen. Welcome, I'm Steve. Here, we deliver honest, sponsorship-free TA with genuine value. Subscribe for a no BS approach that actually helps you. Subscribe. Here we are. Bitcoin US dollar index, we are on the monthly chart and in front of us, we have the Fibonacci sequence tied with this incredible having event. We need to get to the bottom of these lies that you've been told, this misleading, this misinformation, and we're going to set the record straight based on the Fibonacci sequence, which is a mathematical sequence that is arguably the strongest mathematical sequence on planet Earth, which can clearly define crypto. Because you can see Bitcoin does the same exact things before the having and the same exact things after the having, and it's all laid out in front of view with the Fibonacci sequence. Now take a look at the chart. This white line right here represents precisely when the halving happened. Back here in 2012, November 2012. Four years later, 2016, we had the halving in July precisely at this candle. Fast forward four years again, this white line represents precisely when the halving happened back in May of 2020 and this dotted line that we're currently in is in the month of april when the having is about to happen as we speak so when we look at it we can say okay here's the 2012 cycle here's the 2016 cycle here's the 2020 and 2024 and bitcoin has done the exact same things before the having in the exact same things after the having, and it's all based on the Fibonacci sequence. So therefore, all of the comments that we see online that are spreading these false narratives of what's going to happen after the having, we can wipe all those away and we can look at it with clear, cold, hard facts in the charts. So if you're wondering, how do you set up this Fibonacci sequence, right? You can go over here on your trading view to the Fibonacci retracement. Right? And you can basically go from the prior swing high to the swing low, which means that prior all-time high, the highest price that that reached, you click once there, you drag it down to the lowest price, and you click again, and then voila, you're done. And if you have the settings set up on a log scale, like I do, you'll have these boxes clicked, and then you'll come down to the log scale, and you'll have that fib based on log scale. Just make sure your chart is on log scale and you'll have it precisely like this. Now, you'll notice that in 2012 and in 2016, Bitcoin reached this 2.36 FIB level. It failed to reach that in 2020. We're gonna get to whether we think it's going to reach that or what level it's going to reach at the end of the video. But for now, let's base everything that we see on absolute cold, hard facts. So where are we right now as the halving approaches, we're right near this red arrow. So I went ahead and I put a red arrow in 2020 to illustrate where that red arrow is and what price action was doing, as well as 2016 red arrow here, as well as 2012 red arrow here. Tilt your phone to the side and subscribe. Now keep in mind, the white line is the halving line. Having line in 2016, having line in 2020, having line in 2024. Now that we have that out of the way, let's look at the distinct patterns that Bitcoin makes every single cycle. Take a look. 
2012, we have the bottom of the market represented in this red box. Same that we have the red box in 2016, same red box in 2020, and same red box current day. The key with this red box is every time we have the bottom of the market, we have resistance of this red box at the 0.38 of the Fib level. Keep in mind the 0.38 of the Fib level is highlighted here in our green color. So every single bottom of the market, resistance at 0.38. It happened in 2012. Fast forward 2016, bottom of the market, we had clear resistance at this green level, the 0.38 of the FIB. Coincidence? I think not. Fast forward to 2020, bottom of the market, resistance at this 0.38. 2024 cycle, bottom of the market, resistance at the 0.38. Every single market cycle that Bitcoin has seen so far has seen resistance at the 0.38. Keep in mind, when we're at the bottom of the market, everybody screams for price to go a lot lower. What we were doing was the exact opposite. We were screaming to buy at 15,000, 16,000, 17,000. We don't even need to roll the clip. But what I did was I looked at the whole market and I understood we're at the bottom of the market and I tried to look for the best opportunity to give to my followers, an opportunity to make a lot of money. And this is what I had to say roll the clip. I think it's more likely to hit 500 in the next five years. And if you look at the price now, as I'm filming this video on Wednesday, we have a price of $60. So I chose Coinbase. Coinbase is a publicly traded company. It's directly correlated to crypto. And in my opinion, it was the best opportunity of that bottom of the market. I gave the buy signal at 60 it went from $60 to $283. In other words, that's a 4.7x. Those are extremely hard to come by. And by the way, that's 4.7 so far. You heard what I said in the clip. If you invested $50,000 when I gave that trade alert, you would have turned $50,000 into $235,000. What you wanna do is continue to do the opposite of the herd and focus on the facts. So now that we have the bottom of the market in that red, what Bitcoin does after that, it moves into phase one. Phase one is built directly on top of the resistance of the bottom of the market. Case in point, 2016, phase one built directly on top of that market structure. 2020, phase one built directly on top of that market structure. And 2024, yellow box, phase one directly on top of that yellow structure. So we have the red box representing bottom of the market, yellow box representing phase one. Yellow box, yellow box, yellow box, yellow box. One we, what we do after phase one is phase two builds its structure and it rallies right to the point seven, eight of the FIB. Case in point, 2012, what did we do in phase two of the bull? We rallied directly to the 0.78 and we were met with resistance. Fast forward four years, 2016, phase two rallied directly to the 0.78 and was met with resistance. Fast forward 2020, what happened? Phase two rallied directly to the 0.78 and was met with resistance. So what did we do in 2024? Everybody was wondering, oh my God, what's going to happen? Bitcoin just did the same thing that it's been doing for its entire history. It rallied in phase two directly up to the blue line and was met with resistance. So this leads us into where we are present day, this red line. Here's where things get very interesting. 2012, as we passed this 0.78, we rallied to this red line. The red line is the one represented right here. The one, in other words, is our previous all-time high. Once we break that structure, we enter what's called phase four. That's the most parabolic part of all of Bitcoin's cycles, including the bottom of the market, phase one, phase two, phase three. Phase four is more bullish than all of them combined. Phase four is remarkable. And it only happens once we break this red line and hold it as support. We have to confirm, we have to have a breakthrough and a confirmation, and then we go to the moon, right? Case in point, 2016, once we broke this to this red, the, the 0.78, we rallied to the red line and we're met with resistance. 2020, broke the blue line, where did we rally to? Okay, the red line, and we were met with resistance. Where are we today? Broke the blue line, 
and met with resistance at the red line. That's exactly where we're at today. And I'll give you what's going to happen if we were to enter phase four of the market. But here is a distinct advantage that you can have. No matter where these halvings are placed, Bitcoin is going to continue to do the same exact moves before the halving in the same exact moves after the halving. It's irrelevant where these halvings happen, right? Bitcoin has been doing these patterns based on the Fibonacci sequence for its entire history, right? If you look at what happens, once we break this red line and hold of the support, that's the most parabolic, this is called phase four of the market. That's the most parabolic phase. And where do we rally to? We rally to the 1.618, our next Fib level. And by the way, we're met with resistance. That's precisely what happened in 2016. Finally broke this red level, meaning we have an all-time high. Once you have a true all-time high with confluence in the market, with actual market structure being held as support, you have what's called, there's no resistance levels above your head and Bitcoin could rally freely without any resistance points trying to push us down. That's why phase four is the most parabolic. So once you break, you can see we tried to break here, we tried to break here, and then we finally confirmed and then we rallied where? We rallied to this blue line and we were met with resistance. By the way, what happened in 2020? We finally broke this red line and we've rallied to the blue line and we were met with resistance. What happened in between in 2012, 2016, and 2020, we had the halving at a particular area in the market. We had the halving in phase two in 2012, in phase two in 2016, and phase two in 2020. Meaning, as we had the halving, we had resistance at the 0.78. Case in point, 2012, halving right here, November 2012, resistance at the 0.78. 2016, the halving was right here, resistance at the 0.78, phase two of the bull. 2020, phase two of the bull, resistance at the halving was right here as we spoke. So what's happening present day? Present day, we are running into the halving outside of the 0.78, meaning we are holding support at the 0.78. In other words, we are in the next phase of the bull. Phase three, we were in phase two, 2012, phase two, 2016, phase two, 2020. In this cycle, we're going to see the halving in phase three. Tilt your phone to the side and subscribe. Now, this is where things get interesting, and this could be a huge wrench in the mix, which people are not ready for, which again, there's a lot of information being spread in the comments about, hey, this is gonna happen, hey, this is gonna happen. Actually, Bitcoin does the same exact patterns and we're going to break it down. But more importantly, what does it mean that Bitcoin is going to see the halving in this phase of the market and not phase two as it did before? Does this mean it's going to be more, more bullish after or less bullish after? We're going to get to it. But as you look at it and you ask yourself, okay, how could this be broken down? We have the halving in phase two and suddenly we have the halving outside of phase two. What does this mean? When you look at it and you break it down and you understand, okay, here's one way to look at it. When did we reach the bottom of the market and how many candles did it take into the halving? If you look at this market here, we're gonna look at the bottom of this market, how many days into the halving? It was about 400. And then you look at the bottom here to here was 500 and change. And you look at the bottom of the market here to the halving, it was about 500 days. And you look at the bottom of the market here to the halving, about 600 days. Or if you look at the absolute lowest price into the halving, we're at about 500 days. So are we on schedule? Yeah, it's about 500 days from the absolute lowest price to the halving. Well, let's start breaking it down in terms of percentage, shall we? Meaning we had the bottom of the market until the halving. What percent increase did we have from the bottom until the actual time we had the halving? Then we can look at from the bottom of this market until the halving of how much increase did we have in this cycle versus the others that will tell us like, are we more bullish? Are we less bullish? Let's take a look from this angle. So we go from the bottom of this market, right? Our, our low point to, we'll call it the, the high of the halving price. We're talking about 700%, 700% 2012 from the bottom of the market 
to the highest price of the having candle of that monthly candle. 2016, let's take a look. Measured move from the bottom of the market up until the highest price of the having, 370. So we went from 700 and we cut it almost in half. Now let's go to 2020, right? We're gonna go from the bottom of that market up until the highest price of the having candle, which is at about 230%. So we went from 700 to about 380 to about 230. You can clearly see some type of trend, right? Now we go to present day and we let the drum roll rage, right? Let's see, how far did we have an increase in price until today's market, about 350. So we didn't quite follow what we did in 2020 and that could be a major clue, right? In 2012, we reached this level, the 2.36 to a T. In 2016, we reached this yellow level, 3.26 to a T. This Fibonacci level and this Fibonacci level, cycle after cycle, and we got off the path in 2020. We did not reach the 2.36. We had a double top precisely at the 1.68. Keep in mind, these tops of the markets don't happen at random parts. We're not randomly getting a top at something that's not on our chart. So far in Bitcoin's history, we have either gotten a top precisely at the 2.36 or precisely the 1.68. This is not by accident. This is not a coincidence. This is the Fibonacci sequence. It's very powerful, right? In fact, we had a double top back in 2020 at precisely that area. So in other words, so what does that tell us? Could Bitcoin reach this 2.36? And more importantly, what is Bitcoin going to do after the halving? Let's take a look. We had the halving precisely at this candle. What did Bitcoin do after that? There's a lot of theories in the comments that are like, hey, Bitcoin always explodes after the halving. That's because supply and demand. You know, the supply is cut in half and there's still all this demand. Okay, let's take that theory to the test. Does Bitcoin explode after the halving? Well, here, did we explode after the halving? No, we still had resistance the whole next month and that month that we had the halving. And then we started to rise up right on schedule to break this 0.78. And then we went to battle our all-time high, which we always battle the all-time high at the red level. So did we explode after the halving here? No, Bitcoin did more of the same of what it always does. How about in 2016? 2016, we had the halving here and we actually fell in prices for probably about 40 something percent. Yeah, 30, 30 something percent we fell in prices after the halving. So is that theory that's being spread like wildfire that we always pump after the halving? That's just simply and unequivocally not true based on pure cold hard evidence that's right in front of our eyes. 2020, we had the halving here. What did we do? We had a big red candle after that. So is that considered a pump? No. What did we do the follow? It took us like four months after we we're still holding resistance at the 0.78. So did we explode after the halving? No. So when you see those comments being spread like wildfire, that's simply not true. So could we expect Bitcoin to explode after this halving? If it reaches phase four, because every time we've reached phase four, Bitcoin explodes more than all the other phases combined. And that's a bona fide fact. If you take in all of these price rises, with this phase, with this phase, this phase four is nothing to play with. Once you break the all-time high, it's structurally driven and Fibonacci driven that there is no more resistance above our head. And that's when we see the most parabolic moves in altcoins and the most parabolic moves in Bitcoin. That has nothing to do with the halving. This has to do with pure market structure and cyclical nature. Humans are very easy to predict because of emotion and behavior. Humans act the same way with money since the cave times when we were trading spices to represent money. 
We're incredibly emotional beings with money. That's why we're easily predictable. That's why these mathematical equations that can predict Bitcoin, it, it's, it's very structurally driven. When you look at it and you say, okay, does Bitcoin plummet after the halving? That's another one that you see all over the comment section is, hey, you know what? This time it's gonna plummet. You know, we have this supply and demand and this, this is gonna plummet prices. So did Bitcoin plummet in 2012? No, we actually went up slightly, but still we're respecting this 0.78. 2016, did we plummet? No, we were retesting our market structure, which is what we do every single time in this phase of the cycle. So also a no there. 2020, did we plummet in prices? We had a big red candle, but we structurally we were just fine and there was no worry at all. So in 2024, are we just going to randomly plummet driven by the halving? No, it will not be having driven. It will be structurally driven. Just like all of these cycles so far are structurally driven in cyclical natures. These patterns repeat time and time again. So what could we expect Bitcoin to do after this halving? Keep in mind, the halving is right around the corner. Well, we already looked at 2012. We looked at 2016. We looked at 2020. And every single time after the halving, we did the same exact things. But this time could be different. Why? Simply because where we're at in this cycle. Yes, we're about 500 days from the bottom in 2012. Yes, we're about 500 days from the bottom in 2016, meaning 500-ish days from the bottom into the halving. And that's where we're at now. But Bitcoin right now is in a different stage of the cycle. Keep in mind, the halving in 2012, 2016, and 2020 reached this phase two, phase two, and phase two, respectively. Here we are in this cycle, we're currently in phase three. Phase three, by definition, it flirts real hard with the all-time high or makes an all-time high. So when you take that all into consideration and you ask yourself, well, what could Bitcoin do after this halving? Well, let's take a look. As we look at it, Right now, Bitcoin is being met with resistance at this red line. In order for us to enter phase four of the market, Bitcoin would simply have to hold this red line as support. Once it holds this red line as support, we just barely broke our nose through it in this monthly close, just barely. So we can call that technically our breakthrough candle. Anytime we had a breakthrough candle, such like we did in March, 2017, we followed that up with another breakthrough candle in April, and then we finally got our confirmation candle in May. We need our confirmation candle to confirm phase four. We have yet to have that. If Bitcoin were to confirm phase four after the halving, you better believe we're going to explode in prices, but it will not be because of the halving. It will be because of the cyclical nature of Bitcoin and the repeatable patterns that it's been repeating its entire life. Tilt your phone to the side and subscribe. By the way, if you're wondering, can Bitcoin reach this yellow line? And if so, what is the price of this yellow line? Well, when you look at it and you say, okay, we've had one cycle in 2012, we had one cycle in 2016, we had one cycle in 2020. In other words, we've had three cycles that have completed and two of them have reached this FIB level of 2.36. In other words, 66% of the time we have reached this level. In the minority of the time, only 33% of the time, we did not reach this yellow level. In other words, we have this cycle that we're sitting in now is it possible that we reach this 2.36? We would be lying to ourselves if we said it's not possible. Bitcoin has literally done that the majority of the time. However, we do have the 5.3 theory, which is still holding on strong and has a potential to throw a huge wrench in the mix. But case in point, based on the factual evidence that's right in front of our eyes, it would be silly of us to say 2.36 is not possible. Of course it's possible. Another thing to look at is in 2012, after the halving, Bitcoin raised one, two, three FIB levels, topping at the third. 2016, after the halving, it raised one, two, three FIB levels, topping at the 2.36. 2020, after the halving, it only raised one, two FIB levels, topping at the 1.618. What will it do in 2024? Currently, the 1.618 is at about 175,000, and this 2.36 
is at over 540,000. Which Fib level do you think is going to hit in this market cycle? Let me know in the comments down below what you think is gonna happen. Hit that subscribe button and share this video. Let's get this message out. Do you want less stress and more success in crypto? Click this video right now.